pop up and it stopped it right away. So now it started again. Okay. Thank you, Sean. Sure. All right, we have a number of topics to talk about today. Um, the first one. Sorry, I had to drop off and take a phone call that I've been waiting for. That's all good. Thanks, Don. No problem. Um, Oops, and then I was on mute. I have no idea if anyone's talking. Sorry, I'm just being super disruptive. <laughs> I muted so my funny. computer. I thought no one was talking, so I thought maybe you were waiting for me. I come back, and I probably talked over everybody because I was had muted everything. No worries. You're Sorry. Just, we we're just getting started. And actually, you reminded me that I do have to hop off um, 30 minutes into this call. So um, I, I'll hop off, and then uh, Don will finish up the meeting. Cool. Um, so we wanted to talk today about uh, our project list, and there's a GitHub repo. And I don't, I don't have the little red square around my screen, but am I sharing my screen? Yeah. Yeah, I'm seeing a screen share. Okay, great. Um, so there is a repo with a list of projects that we have, um, and anyone is feel, is open to um, taking a project. I think um, a few of them have been. Um, assigned, and um, this is just like a great way that uh, to organize a lot of the projects that uh, we're starting to to do. Um, I think one that we wanted to talk about specifically was the takeoff Exodus one, um, and I don't know, if, uh, Callie, if you wanted to discuss more about this or dig into it today, but um, I think we have put it on the agenda for any future meetings. Yeah, well, I want to make, I'll make sure to go in there and fill it out. Um, but what I had for today, which I had been talking about for a while, is I created a Google Sheet. And at least for the first few rounds, my idea is that there will be like a singular question or like a five to 10 minute task to like slowly get it along. And then it'll probably, once we get all the information gathered, the people, everyone, looking at these projects with their own tooling or the things that they'd like probably will take a little bit longer. Um, but I wanted to try to keep it as much as possible as small bite sized chunks. Um, so we can make iterative process and it not being like a big task. And so I put the, um, doc in the, um, Google and the sheet. I need to, we need to, I need to put it in this, um, issue. Um, but, if anybody has any suggestions, it's very informal. Um, I just have like a readme on the first page and what is today's, and for, for today's date, the sheet will be to, or the task is to uh, put as many examples as you can think of, of projects that had a mass exodus and then what, around what date that happened and some context around it. Um, yes, yeah, Sean. You're, I can't hear you for some reason. I hear you talking about a sheet, and I think that's not what we're looking at, and I just want to make sure I understand where the, is oh, this yeah. linked in the it's issue? In the working group, it's in the working group minutes, but I need to link it in the issue as well. Yeah, I, I was yeah. just making sure I was following correctly. Yes, let me put it in there, and I'll put some more context as well. You can go on. I just was checking that if I was tracking correctly or not. Um, yes, there's not too much more. And like anybody wanting to add has better format or way of doing this. I just wanted to have at least a place and a starting point and we can start trying to gather some information. Um, and so I saw this as the first step and also like the a pretty easy, easy, quick chunk step. Yeah, I think that's I think that's a great start myself. Um, let me ask a different question. Um, Jan, can you go back to the issue? Um, should we? So I kind of combined takeoff and exodus because we were kind of talking about them together. Should they really be two separate projects? I think they should be separate because okay. it's like I think the behavior you're kind of like you're looking at the inverse. I think that and what, what I'm kind of hoping in this first round that I'm able to come up with a bit of a process and then like we do this for Exodus and then we have kind of like defined steps of how to gather examples and methodology because I think that having it in like 15, 20 minute chunks, even less than for people to do on a um, 
like meeting by meeting schedule is like a is a realistic ask. Okay. Did you want to um did you want to do that with the issues to separate it or do you want me to do that? I'm happy to. Um, if you want to separate right now, it'll be great. If not, I'll do it after the after the call. Okay. I'm gonna fill out some more stuff. Okay. Yeah, because if I do it, it'll be tomorrow. Um, so it might make more sense. I'll go, I'll fill it in right after this um and put in the details of um like what the task is for this week. Okay, perfect. And I think you should have access. I mean, I guess these are just issues, but if you want to edit this one, I think I've given you access on this repository. Yeah. I'll just double check. I do have edit access. Okay, perfect. Okay, so you can do everything you need. Thanks. Yeah. Sorry, other people had their hands up. Uh, yeah, I had a, a basic question. I know we've been talking about it in this group, but I was looking at the issue, trying to see if you had defined these things um, very explicitly so that folks with less context know how to jump in versus saying like, I'm not exactly sure what you're talking about. Um, I was just reading the issue before I asked the question, um, but I don't see it unless I'm missing it. No, I don't think I have a formal definition, honestly, at this point. Um, I'll probably put in being like, here are my thoughts around it. And I kind of think that in okay. the process of research, I'm hoping it becomes a little bit more like uh, the first question being like anything you can think of of people exiting a project. I almost want it to be super broad to try to get as many examples as possible. And then from those examples, then trying to come up with like a next step question and kind of doing like a informal research portion right th at the beginning. Okay, I, I, th I think it kind of makes sense because I do feel like there's a couple of different scenarios of what Exodus could mm -hmm. mean in terms of say like the contributors are leaving or the users are leaving or some combination yeah. of both or someone like the maintainers abandon it because they're doing something else. Like there's so many different contexts of which a project could essentially lo lose its support from many different angles, um, including funding. So yeah, I just, I guess it sounds like you want to leave it broad and so maybe it, just having a little language in there where like x's can mean a number of things like we're hoping for a variable set of examples so that we know how to better frame or scope the problem yes i'll say especially right now and i think the i'll probably amplify that the context section of the form especially at this point is super important of like putting like context to the situation. Cause then if we see like some obvious three groupings, then at the next step, it's like, okay, here are the three different types of exoduses that we see. Okay, what do we see behaviorally that's consistent with all of them or which ones are grouping together? And so then we can, I think that that's where I'm hoping the definition comes out with the different example, crowdsource example. Thanks. Yeah, and that was part of the intent with the with the issues and getting the, the projects defined in issues was that um, I didn't want it to be held up by having all of the definitions right away with the idea that the people who are working on those individual projects can can help do do some of this, uh, like Callie's saying, and it can kind of evolve as we as we move forward with the projects. Sean, did you still have your hand up or is that from before? Okay. That's from before. I, I thought I'd lowered it, but apparently I did not. Yeah, and I really like that approach of like finding some data points of historical projects and then figuring out what the pattern is amongst them and then being able to like you take that and have a discussion with this group. Um, is it, Callie, um, can anyone just start dumping in what they think yeah. into the sheet? Okay, cool. Yeah, everything. I'll, I'll try to after this meeting, try to amplify it on a few different the chaos channels just to see if people can put in as many examples as we can get. I think it's going to make it the most useful. That's good. Thank you. Yeah, sorry. I just put my comment here, but I'll, I'll say it out loud because I feel like as I'm thinking about this, I have a lot of like hypothetical things that I think would make sense in terms of exodus moments. Um, but the challenges are hypothetical because I haven't actually seen the data. So we would think something like Elasticsearch changing their license and open search being created, being a prominent example of an exodus moment where the community or 
con contribution shifted to this other project um, because the main core project changed its license. But I haven't actually looked at that. Like we mm -hmm. think it's true, but we don't necessarily know it's true. People could have also continued to use the older version of it and not like the users may or may not have moved. The users might have continued to use it, use it, but we can't see it now that it's there. So there's like, I'm, I'm wondering if you're okay with these sort of like, we think this is an exodus moment, but it actually deserves investigation. Like another one would be a toxic leader who like says something awful and we imagine that some people leave, but like maybe doesn't actually doesn't actually have an exodus moment. It might be a few angry people left the project because he that person pissed them off, but like it might actually not have been as big of a moment as we would have assumed. Yes, I think I want to change. I'm going to change the wording of it because that's what I that's that's what I'm looking for. Is more of like it, um, I'm trying to think of the right, but like hypothesize exodus moments is really okay. is really a better way of describing what I'm looking for. Of being like this is what I this event happened. I think or I know people left. It doesn't really matter, but we let's investigate further to see if that is what actually happened. Me. Yeah. Yeah, I think we don't have access to edit that document. It should be now. I just, oh, what? Okay. Um, share. What did I do sharing wise that did not? Somebody let me know if the access. Okay. Is sharing. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Oops. Yeah, and it sounds like if it was a license change, we may want to reference the um, license change uh, project as well. Yes. And if there were truly exodus happening at some of these license changes. Any other questions for Callie? Okay. Um, I think the next project that we wanted to talk about was the event location inclusivity. And I think we just left this on the agenda to uh, keep track of it. Um, uh, Elizabeth, Sophia, and I are going to meet tomorrow to talk more. And I think I have to fill out the project issue on, on the repo. So I'll do that before we, we talk. Um, I think uh, our last conversation on that was just that we wanted to uh, solicit some um, feedback from people who are do or who are planning events. So um, people who like Brian Prophet and others um, in the open source community who are creating open source events and um, talk about some of the variables that they think of uh, when creating an open source event. So we can possibly provide an update at the next meeting. Um, and then we talked about the Exodus uh, sheet here as well. Um, next up is practitioner guides. Uh, Dawn, do you wanna take this? Yeah, sure. Um, so one of, one of the things that we've had, I'll just give you some background and tell you why I need this. Um, Historically, historically, we haven't been great within the chaos project about putting references to like academic papers and things on some of our some of our metrics. We're trying to improve that now, primarily because this has this has come up a number of times within the scientific software group where they really need this because they they take our metrics in general, they take our metrics out to some of the folks that they work with in these research labs. And they're like, well, I don't see any academic papers referencing this. So, you know, why should I, why should I believe you that, that these are, that these are important. And so I started thinking about this from the practitioner guide standpoint. So, so as far as the metrics are concerned, Matt actually has a student who um, in the fall is going to come on and spend a few hours a week tracking down references for all of our metrics. So that's not the problem I'm trying to tackle right now. But what I want to do is have some references for why 
the topics in the practitioner guides are are important or um, how they, um, you know, how some of the metrics in those guides influence behavior, something. So like, you know, a few papers about, you know, why responsiveness is important or something, something like that. Um, basically something in the practitioner guides that people can read that says that we're not just, we're not just full of crap. Don's just not making stuff up that there is actual research, um, that shows that, that these are, these are important topics and that these are, um, you know, reasonable ways of, of approaching it. So, um, all of you are, are sort of data people. And so I would say if you have any ideas of papers and I'm I'm trying to track some down now, uh, which is hard because I don't have academic access to anything, um, but I've got some some papers that I'm reading and references that, I, that they've referenced that I think might be useful. So I'll try and track down some papers, probably leveraging people like Sean and Matt to help me a bit um, with, with access to things. Um, but if you have any idea, I'm, I'm sitting. I'm sitting here quietly because my open source software reference in Zotero is, is several hundred. It might even be close to a thousand papers. And if I just dump them on you, I feel like that's almost like no. passive aggressive. Like, <laughs> you know, here you go. <laughs> yep. What I would. <laughs> yeah, thank you for that. So I'd like to. I'd like to put some thought into it first, and I just haven't had time yet. Yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> So Tara, can you tag them? I, I wouldn't ask you to like go through like hundreds to tag them, but is it like if you like, is it, can you tag them though? Yeah, you can. And I okay. can, I can do that. Like I'm actually, my students and I are going through a bunch this summer, um, writing papers and proposals. And uh, there's a conference I often go to that had 136 papers on AI. Oh gosh. This is a conference that is not an AI conference. It's a human computer interaction conference. So I'm starting to read these papers and it's bizarre. End of sidebar. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. I can I can search for papers. Um and so so that that's uh, yeah, so searching for papers isn't particularly helpful because what I what I would like is this paper that Sean and Kevin wrote. Um there's one that keeps getting referenced that I need to get a copy of from one of you all. Um, that I keep I keep seeing in other other uh, papers. So it's things like that. Like like these are maybe three papers you should look at for responsiveness or for organizational participation or for contributor sustainability. So we don't need to have a hundred references. I think we just need like two or three, maybe four really good ones. So so yeah, so I'm looking for your favorite papers on these topics. Um, is there like a list somewhere where we can like uh, see the metric and then dump a um, a paper there or something? No, so that's not the problem I'm trying to solve. So I'm not okay. trying to do for a metric because Matt is, has a student who's going to do that in the fall. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. So, um, so mine is just for the topics in the practitioner guide. So I feel like that's a slightly different problem because like the the papers that we would pull out for like elephant factor, for example, would be very specific to elephant factor. Whereas the ones for the practitioner guide might be specific to an individual metric in here, but would more likely be something about somebody's done a study on how responsiveness or lack thereof in an open source community impacts contributor retention or new contributor onboarding or something like that. So I'm looking here for some papers that are a bit more um, broad than I think what we'll need for the metrics. Gotcha. Yeah, actually, just, just thinking of the paper I shared a few weeks ago on how developers were assessing dependencies um, and responsiveness was one of them. So it's sort of like, is that too indirect? Because I feel like that is sort of an indirect view where if you're not focusing on responsiveness, people are more likely to discount your tool or, or your solution because they don't think that you would respond actively to issues and therefore your project might be labeled as like maybe unmaintained or unreliable. So it's sort of a, it's a byproduct, but not necessarily directly about responsiveness. Yeah, I might use that one. I, I just read that one on the plane. I was just on the plane from Zurich this, af this afternoon and I just read that paper 
And I've, they, they also referenced a couple of other papers that they used to come to those conclusions about responsiveness. Mm -hmm. um, so I may, I'm gonna look at those and see if any of those are maybe a better choice than that one. But if, if okay. not, it's a good solid. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's indirect to your point. It's like yeah. not addressing, directly addressing it, but it does demonstrate how this is an important metric and evaluation. Yeah, exactly. Okay, that was it. So, so send me your send me your recommendations. Um, and and Sean, I will ping you offline because there are a couple of papers that I suspect you have that I would just like. Yeah, on. I just yeah, I you... started I started making a list that I need to finish making a list of when I um, tomorrow when I have some more time. Yeah, if um, you just send me uh, if you send me an email, I can send you a link. I do have a chaos share with some classification in it. It's I haven't touched it in about three years because. I stopped needing to share it. Uh, students graduated, but um, yeah, I can share that at least. There's at least some utility there, I think, for sure. Okay, cool. And it's it's like it's a little bit gardened instead of like dumping the whole thing on you. Cool. Thanks, All right. Thank you. And then there's this petite investigations. That's that's Anyone? that's mine. Okay. Um, Don Don brought it to the attention of the Augur Aitnak group a couple of weeks ago that um, it would be helpful to to sort out some of the data access issues and it's a multifaceted problem uh, involving GDPR IRB um, basic expectations that people have and physical hardware. So um, I, I think. I would like this group to think about not really, I don't really have any answers right now, but uh, ways of uh, collecting smaller scale, because um, I'm having a hard time with the very large scale public instance and then making parts of that easily accessible for analysis because ad hoc querying uh, destroys the equipment I have in terms of like its ability to serve up what it's there for. So um, I'm thinking in terms of ways to fire up smaller uh, collections, maybe using um, smaller servers for those, or even have them be local, uh, just to support some of the work that you're all doing. And um, also kind of set it up in a way that it's kind of not data that I'm responsible for, because then you can do what you want with it. Um, and I don't, you know, I have more institutional restriction than most people on the chaos project, because I'm a professor. Yeah, um, and, I, and I talked to Matt, and he also said that he might have he might also have some infrastructure we can use um, if we had the the data. But like you said, we we can't. So I have full disclosure. I have just stopped making ad hoc queries on the production SaaS instance because I know it causes pain for the Augur team. Um, so if I really needed something, I would I would let you know and maybe do it. But but I'm right now yeah. I just. I'm just not doing that because I know it's I know it's causing problems. Um, well, I've, I've, so I think I think like you said, like extracting smaller data sets and putting them somewhere else where we're not impacting the the SaaS um, production environment. I think is what we're going to need. Um, but I also think you saw the you know the the project list and kind of the state of it right now. And right now we're collecting the things that we need we need to figure out in in spreadsheets and, and smaller data sets. So I think we we need to figure out what we need um, first. Yeah. Well and, and I, I, that's and by I, I'm not standing still so I've already like made some adjustments trying to tune things out um, based on a, lim a more limited budget than I'd hoped for. So mm -hmm. um, I could, yeah so just uh, I guess if you get to the point where you desperately need something, Callie and I do have some equipment and ways to help get it to you. I'm not signing Cali up for anything. I'm just, I'm just saying I'm, I am not the only holder of the data and we're working on uh, putting some, putting the large collection in the hands of uh, parties who are not bound by all the crap that I have to be bound by. Um, I, think I mean, I ethically, like, we're all bound by the same beginning. crap, but yeah. Um, yep. Well, what's, so is this something that's happening with the, with, with the chaos auger instance is that if people are doing direct queries, it's causing problems for eight, the y'all's eight not instance. Is that what, how mm. I'm? Yes. Yeah. I wonder 
I guess I don't, I guess at least the, I don't think I have that scenario and I want to make sure I'm not. The, di the difference, your system is sitting on a bare metal with a terabyte of RAM. Okay. Uh, the public instance is, <laughs> is the pub, the public instance is substantially yeah. less substantial, if that's a way of saying that. That makes sense. And then I know we're talking about moving the, our, like my, like the Red Hat instance onto, I think that's going to get some places. Yeah, that that's, that, yeah, I didn't want to like, I don't want to say there are, I'm having a discussion with uh, some folks at Red Hat about possibly hosting the public instance, which would uh, solve a number of sustainability concerns and possibly dovetail with the work that they're doing anyway. Yeah, and yeah. I would say this is not this is not an auger problem. This is something that we could solve with with additional resources and money and funding for additional infrastructure. This is just a, you know, the fact that we're a poor open source project and we don't have unlimited <laughs> access to um yeah. to compute power and so we just need, yeah. to, we just need to figure that out and and yeah. while we figure that out i'm being a little more judicious about um not hammering the instance yeah. with and, uh, probably I, inefficient queries because i'm not a i'm not a database expert but um and I, I think all the computers being sold are going to ai right now anyway <laughs> everything for everything is going to ai right now so um but I don't know. I, I can't. I can't interpret Sophia's face. I, I don't know what that. I don't know if she's pain. making that face at that's, us that's, or. That's a, a basic pain. <laughs> it is pain, and this is like a public announcement. Like people know, like all the infrastructure is going here, and it's. I yeah, I do have concerns about that that I will not voice on a recorded. Uh, yeah, yeah well, I, just, I, I gotta feeling. go. I gotta go put some glue on my pizza. So. <laughs> Um, I will say for the, now that I understand the problem a bit more, I'm pretty hopeful that we'll be able to get like a part of Red Hat's OSPO is to like, we have a thing called the community cage, which is infrastructure for community projects. And so as long as we have, um, like someone to admin said, said technology, the actual infrastructure being available isn't the problem. It's the staffing. So it seems, so we might be in a good good situation. Yeah, I was also thinking about that too. I think on the Google side, we've historically done cloud credits, but if stuff isn't running on Google Cloud, then like that's not really helpful because uh, then mean, you would have to use a whole bunch to get it there. And then I don't know how much that's left, but we do have a process for um, for products to apply and ask for infrastructure. Um, but if you're not using our infrastructure to begin with, I would say maybe that's less applicable. But if you are, let me know and I can look into what that process looks like. I, I look at problems like this as we should try multiple approaches because one of them is bound to work. So if you could send us a, a link, that would be helpful. And um, and if, if you send it to both Don and I and maybe Callie, then there'll be three uh, eyes with different perspectives on it. And we can collectively decide how to approach it. That would be great. Um, I'm, would, sorry, this is like maybe like the side tangent, uh, but I've been thinking about this a lot in terms of how do we make data like this more available that doesn't require a lot of infrastructure and resourcing. Um, and I feel like it's, I don't know if we know enough to do that because I feel like there's like maybe if we have more historical data on the kinds of queries that are run, we would know the tables that are most popular. And maybe that's something that's like a preloaded table or pre-run query or something that's just like a live updated thing that you can just reference versus having to run the query again. And, and that way the 500 people that were running the query now have access to the same table and it's not being run 500 times. Like I've been thinking about that internally for some of our shared infrastructure and shared data sets in terms of like how do we curate tables to reduce the need to like recombine on the back end and cause more infrastructure um, to be used, uh, which is, it's kind of a hard problem, but if we have enough data on usage patterns, then maybe we could reduce the load. Um, hypothetical optimism, but. <laughs> That's actually how 8 not uses Augur, is that once okay. you get past the like review stage and we like have a new visualization, we turn whatever query goes into that visualization into a materialized view. And then like usually the a part of the review process is, okay, is there two different vision? And most of our visualizations are actually based off of like three or four queries. So then we have, okay, here's a query 
that services all of these visualizations. We make one materialized view. And so that's how it can actually like run efficiently. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I suspect that we need materialized views for some of the starter project health metrics um, queries that, that I run. Um, that would probably probably help with that. But that's, and... that's not, um, to be honest, the, those are, I don't know, I still like them because it gives me it gives me a little more data than what the SAS instance provides. But to be mm -hmm. honest, with, with the improvements you've made in, in 8 not, I need that a lot less because I can get most of that data. Um, and if, if there's like if specific things that, that you're looking at that you don't see in 8 not now, open an issue and we can start to build that visualization or no, we can it's start the people's, it's the, the people's names that I don't get. Oh yeah, no. So when I run the starter project health metrics model, I get a bus factor with names on it. Yeah. Uh, that's the additional data. And so we just can't do that in the SAS instance. And I, I know that, uh, but the rest yeah. of it is there. And to be honest, I sometimes use, um, I get, I can get everything else pretty much with eight knot. And then I can get the contributor stuff from just the insights tab on, on GitHub, just filter it by the same time. And I can kind of see, we can, I can see which names match with, with the eight knot visualization. Yeah. There's, um, there is some paradox, um, in, in this, you know, we don't, we don't want to make names available to anyone. And we only collect them to reconcile identities across platforms. Yeah. Um, but we maintain an on a, we maintain a random UUID key for each person. Yep. And I only use the names with the people who own those projects. Um, yeah. um, That's yeah. kind of how we do all yeah. of our. Yeah. It's, it, I only do that stuff for internal reporting for Red Hat. I don't post anything, but I'm happy. Is you're, you're the second person that has told me about eight not being used for something that I haven't been hearing about, and I need I need wins right now. So thank you yeah. for making me feel like my work matters. <laughs> it does. It does. I yeah. yeah. I'm a big fan of visualizations. I mean, I, I ran a I ran a AP, like a checker uh, like one of those like an old school weblog thing, which got me like the last trailing two weeks of connections and there's like there's like several thousand people a month connecting to the public eight not instance like several thousand unique ids so there's yeah. way more people using it than are creating accounts yeah that i know about i was in a yeah. finos call earlier today like demoing eight not and somebody had to which i said i i appreciate feedback Please open it. I would have loved him to open an issue and not come at me in a public setting in the yeah. way that it happened. <laughs> but I was like, well, I'll take the win that there's somebody who very clearly is consistently using 8-Knot for their use cases and has some qualms. Um, the qualms in an issue earlier for that I could fix them would be great. But, you know, you take your wins where you can get them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> All right. Does anybody right. else have anything that we need to uh, add to the agenda? I think we've reached the end of the agenda. We were good. I just showed the high jumper video. You can watch it oh, on yeah. time. Ooh, it's like, okay. it's a whole one in terms of like the actual progression. But if I think I shared it at the point where it ends, which is at like minute three and 20 something. Um, where they discuss what to do in a tiebreaker and decide to not have one. I love it. <laughs> I just right, also I love it. how the one guy celebrates because he's clearly a high jumper and is like springing all over the place. <laughs> all right, I'm going to watch this now before my next meeting. Yeah, it's, it's a marathon meeting day for me as well. I'll yeah, see you all. Good to see you. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye.